This is All the Right Marketing, a publishing podcast by Cardinal Rule Press. Now, here's your host, Maria Desmondi. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to All the Right Marketing, where we talk with business owners and industry leaders like authors, publishers, librarians, and booksellers about how do they get their products which of course are books, into the visibility of readers? How do they get their eyeballs on those products? How do we get people really being able to hear and know about what we are producing? So today we have a lovely guest from California, Tutti Nino. She loves everything about books. She loves the way they make you feel, the adventures they take you on, even the way they smell. And Tutti, I will have to tell you, the perfume I'm wearing right now smells like books. It's from Powell's bookstore and it actually smells like books. So you're going to have to put that on your, your uh, wish list. She is a retired school librarian who spends her days writing gardener, gardenering and playing with her grandchildren. Well, welcome to the podcast. We are going to hear about your journey into writing, but it really, I'm not sure where it started, but I do know that you had shared you were in the army. Yes. I love this part. I like that uh, fun fact or little known fact about me because it is a story of perseverance and getting through hard things. Um, so when I was just out of, out of high school, mom, my mom joined the army because she was a nurse and it was a great thing for her to do. Um, and she convinced my sister and I to join. So we were 18 and 20 and we joined the army and went to boot camp together and when I got there, I realized there's no getting out of this. It was so hard, um, but I had to figure out a way to make it through the next 10 weeks and pass all the tests that they had us take. And now I'm glad that I did it because I showed myself, if I could do that, I can do anything. That is amazing. Wow. Wow. I love hearing especially female stories of being in the army and being in the military and that perseverance. And after that, did you become a librarian? So I know you did have some time in your career um, as a librarian. Was it a public or a school librarian? Tell us. It was a school library. And I, I started doing that as my kids grew older. Um, I volunteered in their school libraries and realized I just loved it. And I had always been writing stories. And then I pursued a job myself. And I just retired last year. Um, I worked for about 12 years in a school library. And it was the best. If, you know, if I didn't have lots of other things I wanted to do with my time, I probably would keep doing it. That's amazing. And you spent all that time with books. So at what point in that process did you say, I think I want to, I want to take a try at this? I started pretty quickly, um, but my stories were not good until I started reading to students. And that was the best thing to be able to read to the students and see what they laughed at watch their expressions, watch when they're bored. And through the years, that was the thing that uh, led me to discover what takes a good book and what kids like. And, you know, oftentimes I don't think authors of children's picture books take the time to actually connect with their readers, to find out what their readers think about um, as far as the book goes. And during this time, did you work with a writer writer's community? Um, were you, you know, a critique book group? Sorry, a critique group? Or tell us a little bit about your community as far as writing. Yes, um, I joined um, SCBWI. Um, I joined 12 by 12. A lot of other um, organizations that helped me. Um, I've probably been in 10 different critique groups. Um, wow. So you know, some where we really meshed and we've stayed together for years and years. I've, I was, jo I joined one after taking a UCLA class um, and none of us were published yet. And there's just four of us in the group, but we are all published or have a contract to be published now. So that's kind of fun. That's wonderful. And I think it's, it's, we should take pause here and just really let the listeners um, can hear what you had said, you were part of so many different groups. I think that's really an important part of the process going from writer to published author is having that community, having that feedback. Um, so you connected with your readers, but you also connected with others in the community. 
Now, Tootie, tell me about There Goes Patty McGee. Tell us where the inspiration came from for this story. Well, one of the classes that I took was how to write a biography. And I realized, oh, I love that. And I knew that schools were looking for biographies for students. Um, and so I just started thinking about people that I would be interested in. Um, and growing up in Southern California, I knew that about skateboarding. It's everywhere here. Um, and then I read an article about Patty McGee. And she just lives like the neighborhood right next to me. And so I contacted her and um, interviewed her personally the first time. Um, and she was such a nice person. I really expected her to be, you know, like a skateboarder, rough and tough. And she's tough on the inside, but on the outside, I just, uh, re we really connected uh, with our personalities. And what did that process look like? So you wrote a draft, you worked on it with your critique group. But I mean, there's so much that happens between that and getting published. Yes. Um, I, before I even met Patty, I'll back up just a little bit. I read everything about her that I could find. So there, there are no books about her, um, but there are a lot of magazine articles. Um, she was on the cover of Life magazine in 1965. So I, I purchased an old Life magazine from eBay, read that whole article, and that really put me in the year. You know, people talked differently back then. Um, and then I went um, to all the other websites and read everything about her and pretty much wrote up a draft of how I thought the story would go. Um, and... I did that before I met her because I didn't want to be influenced by her as to how I, I, you know, how I knew a picture book works. So I did that first and then I met with her to fill in the holes because everything I read about her was just great. It was great. She just, she skated, she learned the tricks and then she went to the national championship and she won. And I know for a story to be interesting, you have to find out what are some of the tough things that happen. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. And probably the first, I met with her quite a few times. Sometimes we just had lunch together and chatted and she could never tell me anything that was difficult. No, it was great. We had so much fun. And then I had to start really like probing the history that I knew about skateboards and skateboarding. And I said, well, did your skateboard ever fall apart? And she said, oh yeah, the wheels would just fall off of my skateboard, you know? And I'm like, well, see, there's a problem. <laughs> you had a bad skateboard, you needed to get a better one. And <laughs> I said, well, did you ever fall? Oh yeah, I fell all the time, <laughs> you know? So in the interview process, I really had to pull those things out. Um, it sounds like she has a very positive attitude. So it was probably hard for her to focus on any of those problems. Exactly. So, so then the, the next uh -huh. part of the process was I, I wrote it and submitted it to agents. Um, and didn't get anything back. Um, so I went on a retreat um, where um, other family members can come with you up in Big Sur, California. And when we would, um, we'd meet in little groups um, and talk about our stories. And then at dinner time, everybody could come. So sitting at dinner, I would just be talking to people that I didn't know. And they would go, oh, you're the one who's writing the skateboard story. Or you're the one that's writing the story about the skateboard girl. And everybody was telling me that. And I'm like, okay, I'm on to something that not just writers are interested in, but spouses and, and men and grandpas. And so I just kept kept plugging away. Kept plugging away. And you signed, um, let's see, the book came out in 2021. Um, so when did you sign the deal? It's with Macmillan, right? Yes. So when did you start working on the book with Macmillan? Um, that was probably, oh, I wrote that down somewhere. Um, 2017, I think. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, not that long. 2018. Okay. Okay. Very good. And the book came out in 2021, which we know that year was a little bit different than, yeah. you know, years in the past. Tell me, how were you able to get 
visibility around that book. So how were you able to get readers to pay attention to the book? I know that the book was selected for the um, li Junior Library Guild, correct? Yes. Which is a would, big deal. And I think that yeah. really helps with visibility. But in what ways did you work with your publisher or what ways did you work as an author to, you know, get the book out there? Yeah, that was hard with um, COVID. Um, so mo most of the big publishers um, all went home and were working from home. And most of them even shut down their um, publicity departments and said, we can't book anything for you right now. Sorry. So I looked around my community and um, we were starting to open back up again by, by May. So three months later. Um, and I looked at um, children's boutiques. because Sometimes they have books in there. I looked at um, toy stores because um, they'll have a few books. Um, and I looked at different skating places. So we have the Skateboarding Hall of Fame near us where Patty was inducted and they were thrilled to have us come there. Um, so I, I sort of reached out of the norm of bookstores because a lot of bookstores still weren't doing um, in-person events, but the, the skate shops were and the Hall of Fame was and I kind of had to think about those kinds of things. Fantastic. That's such a, a great way to think outside of the box and to get people to hear about the story. So would they carry the books or would they have a book event? They would do both. Most of them uh, purchased, you know, between 20 and 30 books. Fantastic. And most of those Patty came with me as well. And <laughs> I felt like the kids were like, running up to Patty and getting her signature and I'm like just sitting there all by myself I'm going to put the book but really what they wanted they wanted to meet Patty and yeah that was thrilling to me because it's like well that's why I wrote the book was yeah. because of her fantastic so. wow uh so what's what's on your plate now I mean this is wonderful are you continuing to write and submit I, I I'm not sure if we talked about whether or not you had an agent I do not have an agent. Um, I'm still working on getting an agent and I, I have found that getting an agent, well, obviously for me, it was harder than getting an editor. I feel like if you go with an editor, you go straight to the person who likes it. But now I've, I have so many stories that I've written that are polished and ready to go. Um, and with working in the library and grandkids and all that, I haven't had a lot of time to submit. Um, and, and to know which one is ready for the market today. So I really would love an agent, you know, to sh sort of show her my stories and she could just say, you know, what, not this one, you know, not this one. Oh, maybe this one. Wonderful. That's great. That's, and I think signing with such a big house and not having an agent that, you know, not a lot of times do we hear that. So what, what did you, would, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> did they <laughs> accept unsolicited manuscripts or how did that work? Um, I don't think they did, but um, I met Trisha de Guzman, uh, my editor, at a conference. Mm -hmm. I actually didn't meet her in person there, but um, she, the the talk that she get, gave sounded like she would like something like Patty McGee. So I really honed it in and, and got it in really good shape and sent it to her probably four or five months after the conference. And she responded right away and and her edits were amazing and we worked through it pretty fast. That's fantastic. Yeah, that she really is. Amazing. And at tomorrow, no, not tomorrow, Saturday, I'm speaking at the same conference in uh, Fullerton where I met Trisha. So that's kind of fun. Full circle, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's wonderful. Well, Tootie, you know, if you could say anything to writers out there, what would be your greatest advice for getting published? Um, let's see, I wrote that down somewhere. <laughs> I think my biggest advice is if you want to do something, you can do it. And it's, it might not be easy. It might be easy. It might not be, but it'll happen if you keep working at it and working at it and honing your skills, um, whether it's joining the army and you just have to survive 
boot camp or writing stories and figuring out how all that works. Um, it's any, I think anything is possible if you do the work you need to do. I think that's great advice. Thank you so much for coming today and sharing your story on the podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, you know we interview and release every single Tuesday, so stay tuned to hear more inspiration on how writers get their messages into the world and into the hands of readers. Thank you so much. Have a great day. If this episode resonated with you, let's take it a step further. Head over to cardinalrulepress.com and check out our blog. It is filled with resources for anyone who loves books, whether you are a publisher, a librarian, a bookseller, or an author. We help you to figure out ways to get visibility around those books. Thanks for listening to All the Right Marketing with Maria Desmondi. If there is a topic you would like us to explore and cover, please email podcast at cardinalrulepress.com. Head over to our website, cardinalrulepress.com, to sign up for our monthly newsletter where you can learn more tips on getting books visible into the market. Last but not least, follow us on Instagram for a daily dose of all things books. If you enjoyed this episode, rate and review or share with a friend or colleague. Thanks so much.